Hi, Kunui here. How you doing? Good to see you. I have a, um, a quick vision to want to share for um, for everyone that's listening. I on um, the second of January this year, I I dreamt. Um, it was about a week ago now. I dreamt the stream. Over a dozen people gathered together and learning to preach and make disciples of Jesus. At the break, I mentioned we could just keep doing this for ourselves and just work with what has already been working as his vision enables. Because we're already seeing fruit. Although I mentioned that many others will not get together in these trainings so they can connect the dots of what discipleship looks like. Uh, so if we don't um, if we don't get others, the vision will not expand. The gospel will just be for the few instead of reaching unreached places and seeing many others catch the vision. This made logical sense. So what training am I talking about? The trainings are the, um, you know, the kickstart training, the getting together, um, you know, rallying together and learning as people of God to walk by faith, to um, to know the word of God from Matthew 28, 18, 20. Um, therefore, I've given you all authority, Jesus said, go in all the nations and make disciples, preaching the word, teaching people to obey, obey this commission, this great commission of going out and preaching the gospel. So... And then it became evident in the light of the fruit of that's already produced um, that a few scriptures came to mind or the, a few training tools that we've been already using to keep utilizing those tools from the commands of Christ. Um, it's such a great um, you know, tool where it talks about in the book of Acts chapter 2. Uh, I can read it to you. It says in verse, uh, let me read it, um, two verses there, mainly I want to focus on. In verse 37, um, where they ask in Peter and the apostles, what must we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the riches of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the key one. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. Wow. And um, even in verse 43 says, Fear came on every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. As we see in 2020, a lot of signs and wonders been done. And, and we've seen miracles of God. We've seen people, um, you know, really, really taking this job seriously. And, uh, and, and reverence, fear came upon even myself. And I, I've, I've learned that um, the people that are coming in the fold in the kingdom of God, there's got to be ways to disciple these ones. There's got to be a way to, to mentor one-on-one -on -one or family and take time out of our everyday today grinding um, you know, throughout the week and be consistent in walking out with people to know the Word of God and to know the vision, to know how to apply the biblical principles. And um, it, makes it, it makes it very, very um, true or I guess very clear for me personally that this is something that has been working last year, but this year, in order for us to see even more fruit and reach the unreached places, uh, we have to disciple others who will disciple others, who would actually to be reproducible um, so that as people are walk, learning to walk in this authority, they too can teach others who will in turn teach others. So can you see to the second, third, fourth generation um, the Word of God says, all the children who are far off, um, you know, and, and um, even as many as the Lord God shall call. And God is the one who will call these ones. So it starts with prayer, our consistent, you know, coming in the in the place of worship to God and our spending time of the scripture, consistent, you know, getting together weekly, evangelism, prayer nights, coming together, reading the word, um, being, being discovering the Bible as, um, you know, we see leaders step up to facilitate these kind of groups because this is that all that matters really uh, amongst all those other things that we're doing. So really I want to read from the book of Ephesians chapter 2, 1922, that the head of the church is Christ. Oh, and this is the other thing I saw in the dream. I saw this picture. I'm going to try and, and put up if, if I can just put the, the film on that. Maybe you can see it. You can see it there. Uh, this is what I saw in the dream. Uh, it was in the apartment that we were staying. You can see it's a, it's a um, it's an angel, I guess, or a man with wings, but it's got a sword, um, you know, just un under his head, like like this. 
and um, and I saw the head of this picture or this obviously this portrait being removed, and it was like connecting the dots, um, you know, and it was connecting to itself. And then I heard in the spirit that um, God is literally is is the head of the church. Christ Jesus is the is is the church is the Christ, uh, the and, and he's the head, and we um, you know we're the ones who uh, you know where the anointing is. And this connects the puzzle or the dots when we get together in in, you know, in fellowship together, you know, consistently. When Jesus is the head, and we, um, as as the many members in the body with unique, you know, diverse um, giftings and talents and skills, we all can keep, come on board. And every one of us has something to do to 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 do in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is now. You know, there's not sometime in the future, sometime, you know, somewhere, you know, in 10 years, in 20 years or in, in when I'm gone. The kingdom of God is now. That's what we're seeing miracles. That's what we're seeing people come to repentance. That's why our heart is growing for the lost because we have, have the living God inside of us, the God of heaven. So the kingdom of God is coming in power. So as the church, you know, embodies the kingdom, we see the kingdom, um, you know, things happening round about us. Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of God is near or is at hand. And so Ephesians 2.19 says, um, here we go. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2. I better look it up here. Ephesians 2, Romans, Galatians. Here we go. Ephesians 2. Chapter 2, 19, 22. Um, and I'll finish off with this. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens citizens with the saints and the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto the holy temple of the Lord in whom you also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Praise Jesus. Who would not um, you know, take this literally and, and into, into your life right now? Even if the, the world, you know, if, you know, in the end times now, we're living, are rising up against you know, the sons and daughters of God, as it says in John 16, these things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yeah, the time cometh that whoever killeth you will think that he doeth God a service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Wow. So we, we have to remember that the people around us, they don't know God. Of course they're going to kill us. They are burning churches in the other side of the world. They're torturing people and uh, for the for the cause of the gospel. If you call yourself a believer um, you know, in the other parts of the world, you are, you're going to get your head cut off. Or put in prison, or you know, cut your limbs off, whatever. Um, but in this part of the world, they're going to hate you just as much. Um, just you know, we might not see a head cut off, or whatever. But but you are going to come against the enemy that that hates you and does not like you. So, my brothers and sisters, um, you know, fellow citizens of of the heavenly calling, let's take this seriously, literally, and let's look outside. Let's um, you know, look, let's see things clearly. For the 2021 is exciting year, and when we're getting close to the Lord in these dark times, the light of Jesus Christ shines brighter because our lamp is sitting in the middle of the room, not in the corner with a with something covering it, but it's in the middle so they can see our good works when we walk in faith and glorify our Father in heaven. Amen. God bless you and God keep you, and I look forward to walking this walk of faith with um, with anybody who wants to come on this journey because there's a lot of work to be done. Be blessed.